Go ahead. Listening to first Nathan ever. Okay. All right, everybody. Welcome back to That Gets My Goat's second worst marathon ever. I'm Big Anglovich. And I'm Rich Outfield, and we're doing the Pixar Rules of Storytelling 8 or 9? Nine? 9. Rule number 9. There is no rule number 9. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. If that's real... No, then... unfortunately it's not. There's really a rule. Oh. Um, <laughs> rule number 9. When you're stuck, make a list of what wouldn't happen next. Oh. Lots of times the material... To get you unstuck will show up. Okay, so there's absolutely no way we can apply this to the 15 Pixar movies. <laughs> right. But anybody can apply this to the next project that they're working on. Okay, read it again. I'm sorry. It's a, when you get stuck. When you're stuck, make a list of what wouldn't happen next. Lots of times the material to get you unstuck will show up. So basically they're saying what shouldn't be coming out of what's happening here make a list of all that stuff one of those things may actually be what should happen what does happen what ne you needs to happen for you to move on the outlining book that i've mentioned a couple of times it's by k.m wyland that's one of the things that she's uh that she mentions in her outlining is a to make a list of things that are expected to happen Expected by what, the reader? Yes. What would the reader, what would people expect to be happen? And it could be as simple as just the hero will win in the end. Then you can take a look at those things and be like, what if I didn't do what was expected? Would that make the story better? Make That way your story will be more original. At least, if you take a look at what people will expect to happen and then maybe go against expectations on some of those things at least. And then the other thing she says to also do is make a list of what is unexpected, what would be really weird, what would be unusual, and yeah, again, these things may be actually what should happen instead. So... This sounds like a similar thing to me, you know, take the, the oh, what wouldn't, what shouldn't happen here? And yeah, maybe you better go with one of those because that might get you the idea that you need. And again, your story will be more original for it. Are you somebody that gets stuck a lot in your writing? Not a lot, I would say, because I'm somebody who tends to, and I don't, for short stories, I don't make a lot of outlining ahead of time. But I do do a, at least a relatively simple outline, so I kind of know where I should be going next. And I would say I don't get stuck all that often. There have been a time or two, but uh, I think outlining ahead of time helps to avoid that. Because you know where you're supposed to go, and it's hard to get stuck when, uh, I don't know, the road is right there in front of you. Okay, well, that's good. I, I I get stuck a lot, it seems like, but I'm not objective enough to see why I get stuck on certain projects and why I don't on others. Because, yeah, I like to outline as well. Uh huh. But sometimes my outlines are really dense with, like, dialogue, and he really thinks that this, but the once, years and years ago, this happened, and so... And then other times it's, you know, a paragraph where, you know, she sees her neighbor do something and realizes the neighbor is a witch and becomes fascinated with witches. And so she does something to blackmail the neighbor into teaching her witchcraft. You know what I mean? Right. I, I don't know. It seems like you could do both. You could do, sorry, that you could implement this rule during your outlining uh -huh. To figure out what step is next, or you could implement it during the actual writing. Yeah, but, I mean, but this is really useful for writers, much more for us than for an other kind of artist. Yeah, that's one of the things that she kind of says in her outlining book is that an outline is kind of like a first draft, or is oh. zero with draft. 
Yeah, zero draft. I like that. Um, well, I don't like the word, but <laughs> yeah. I like the the idea. idea. We'll just say it's a zero with a th after it, um, and then it's not a word. So getting stuck in that and making the list, blah blah blah, is sort of the same thing as being stuck in writing and using that same kind of technique. Yeah, I think that's an, uh, an interesting rule. Something that could really help. Okay, read it one more time. Because, yeah, this is definitely something... I, it's something I need to apply to Jeremiah's Blues. Because I haven't written on Jeremiah's Blues in several days. And I have no intention of going back to it. So, <laughs> When you're stuck, make a list of what wouldn't happen next. Lots of times the material to get you unstuck will show up. Okay. So, yeah, just a list of what sh- wouldn't happen and maybe that's what you need to actually go with the end yeah that's 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 useful and i have nothing more to say about that all right i'm big anklevich i'm rich outfield i think we'll see you tomorrow (laughs) sorry to wonder though (laughs) that gets my goat is released under a creative commons attribution non-commercial no derivatives license meaning share it with everyone but don't sell it or change it uh, that's interesting. The, the the I wish I could remember her name off the top of my head. Hold on a second. I'm going to find it out. Is it Grayson or Paterka? <laughs> nope. It's Budicover. Ooh, I like it. I love the fart reel. <laughs> that's a voice that starts out the, the fart reel. Yeah.